Jaden Kindred, it's so delightful to have you join us for our We Choose to Thrive Center interview. It's such a special pleasure that women like yourself will come forward and share the stories because our whole mission with We Choose to Thrive is to let others know that we can become heal, we can be well, and we can thrive. And that is our greatest message to the world. And it's our greatest gift to ourselves. So thank you so much for being here. And tell us a little bit about your story, what happened for you. Um, so a little bit about like my story and where it started was it pretty much started at birth for me. I was born into a family who uh, belonged to a group. Um, and so from the very beginning, it the best I know, I was probably born for the purpose of actually being given to other people. So I was raised um, in where I didn't actually know anything other than abuse. So my abuse really involved a lot of torture, a lot of sexual abuse, physical abuse, spiritual abuse. I lived that life until I was 20 years old, and that's when I finally got, you know, all of the way out. There was times in there where, like when I was about 13 years old, when there they were there's one of the people in the group were caught uh, abusing me at school, and so that particular individual went to trial. So my experience involves like being a, a, a witness in a courtroom and testifying against this person. You know, I did live in a group home for a period of time, but my parents still had custody of me, so they would still pick me up on the weekends and bring me back to that environment. And uh, my views had very much revolved around a calendar system that they had created. So there was like particular days that were like very important to them where they, they did certain things. And there was, you know, sometimes smaller groups of people and then larger groups of people that participated in the abuse. So that's, that's a little bit about kind of where I'm at. And then have you found that because of that, what, what I found, because I'm, my child abuse was very much similar and it came from childhood. So if you found that because of being raised in that kind of environment as a child, that as you started your adult life and broke away from it, you seem to attract the very same thing or similar abusive situations. Yeah, it's been very difficult for me to learn to live in a different environment. It was I still feel like um, you know I'm 46 years old now, and I still feel like. I'm learning every day, like how to belong in a world that kind of operates in a much different way of thinking and mindset. Um, even though I've been away from there for so long, it's it's still because all my developmental years were, <laughs> you know, my mindset was and the way it was created in my body was all from from early on, and so it's it's been quite a learning process. I'm sure it is, and I know it was for me. In fact. On my 60th birthday is when I published my book, my story, because it kept hanging over me like this wet blanket, you know, and it was just that something that you, it felt like you get smothered with it. And sometimes your frame of reference, it's like learning everything from, you know, in, in adulthood, when we have children to raise and we have the responsibilities of life, it's it's sometimes difficult to, to know the right things to do and to attract the right things, situations. Yeah, so I ended up, like you, to back to your original question there was, uh, you know, I, I am divorced now. I you know ended up marrying somebody who um, was a good, safe person. Like, it, it, that's all I was looking for. So, like, was I was very clear while we were dating that, like, you know, I would not tolerate, you know, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, any of those kinds of things. But then what happened was is that, you know, there wasn't all those other things that eventually I needed in that relationship. So, you know, it ended up not working out. And then, you know, because I was still learning so much, I really didn't know how to um, take care of myself. And so I ended up, uh, you know, putting myself in a position of, being assaulted as an adult as well uh, when I was on my way to work early one morning and that's kind of like what triggered me really going into some deep healing you know therapy work um, on my past as well. Mm, I so admire you that you know as we have this conversation that that we can talk about these things and bring them up because we're not the only ones you know, right. that are in these situations and so where are you now on your healing journey? 
Oh, it's it's still a journey, <laughs> uh, but I actually I've been you know back uh, in therapy since that incident happened, and uh, so I've been I do go to therapy two to three times a week, but it helps me be able to stay capable of being able to function, to be you know high functioning in the world that I'm in, and you know I have a, a job as a you know like a chief operations officer. <laughs> College, I run a college, um, but I'm able to do these things because I am taking care of healing myself and taking mm -hmm. care. Of the biggest thing I had to work on was the dissociation. Um, so I do, I'm doing a lot of work on that, and I'm much more present in the last couple of years than I've ever been in my life. So That's it helps me be able to be capable. So my therapist actually describes like when I walked into her office five years ago, I had relocated and I started working with a different therapist and she describes me even after seven years of therapy with somebody else two to three times a week. When I walked into her office, I still wasn't able to make eye contact. I wasn't able to talk about what happened at all in any kind of detail, even as much as I just said here. Um, and it kind of had, you know, would bow down my kind of my, my face covered with my hair and just really no confidence at all. And that's kind of what she describes as the person that walked in her door. So where I'm at wow. you now is I can talk, I can speak. Look at you now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's definitely hard days still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's, uh, I call them yeah. triggers. There's things that are, tr that trigger us that can, we think we're doing way really good and then boink, yeah. you know, and it just. Goes back I've either found emotions or emotions have found me that like I'm sure <laughs> they're all Where'd that come from? Yeah, I'm not real comfortable with them, but like I'm learning how to sit in my emotions now and in, there's a lot of them because a lot of them had to be suppressed for so long. It, like when I was in a situation, it just wasn't even safe to be able to show that I was, you know, in pain or hurting or I wanted to cry. Those things just weren't safe to do in the situation when I was growing up. And so I just learned to hold them so tight inside me. So now I'm, I'm learning that it's safe to kind of release those emotions, have those emotions, those kinds of things. Very good. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a journey. And, and it's something that has to be, we have to be always diligent about and, and really pay close attention to because it is sometimes, I don't know whether it would be terminating calling it going backwards, but it feels like we're going backwards. It definitely times. feels like that. My therapist assures me I'm not, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely uh, use that language too. <laughs> so you tapped into having a therapist. What Were there other, were there books that you've read? Have you used any other kinds of maybe art or journaling or anything like that that has proved to be beneficial for you? I've done all of those things, and uh, you know what I found is, uh, you know, uh, that the talk therapy, which is a therapist I had seven years prior to to when I met my current therapist, was all into cognitive behavioral therapy. And what I was doing is just kind of reliving in the cycle over and mm -hmm. over and over again. So then I met my current therapist, and she combined um, EMDR with uh, equine therapy, and. Oh, cool. So the equine assisted therapy has been the most, is really what I, I would say made the biggest difference in my healing and me being able to move forward. I was able to start learning to trust, you know, trust, trust the horse. I was, start, I was able to, uh, you know, start setting boundaries, um, asking for what I needed. Just so many of the social things that I could learn in a safer way or something I felt safer with because it was humans that hurt me. So mm -hmm. it was very hard for me to trust another human to help me. But when it came to, there was definitely a draw for me to, to get back out to the arena to work with the horses and to build that connection. So that kind of kept me motivated towards moving forward in the work. So I would say that's probably the, the most significant. Beautiful. I moved I've, to the back, yeah. actually. And now I have horses of my own. I live on my own. I bought a little house with a farm out back. So <laughs> <laughs> I really kind of carried it through. But Wonderful. That is so beautiful because I have found that some people use art, some use dance, they use all, there's no one way that's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. It's what works for us as individuals. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say to someone that is just starting their journey, just realizing that they're totally unhappy, they're not functioning, they're, they're not doing the things that they, living the happy life that we're meant to live? what would you say to them? 
You know, I would say reach out for help. <laughs> and I would also say that, you know, it's not going to be the right fit, probably not going to be the right fit, the first person that you reach out to. And as hard as that is, um, you know, I would, I would really encourage that person to keep trying to find somebody who's going, they can connect with and um, that they feel like will work with them. Mm -hmm. um, and to be tenacious about that and not give up. Um, and I also say, you know, take, you know, they, they know themselves the best. And so, you know, letting somebody else direct the therapy, uh, they don't have to let that happen because like, you know, they're, they're a guy, but they know themselves better and what they need more than anybody else. So like, there's so many different things out there. There is the art therapy. Yoga has really helped me. Um, you know, I've learned to meditate. Uh, I, you know, I work yeah. with coaches, animal assisted therapy. So, um, and at different times, different things work for me. Like so they, you know, yoga may work for me for a while and then I take a break from it and do something different because that's, that's what, you know, I need to be able to release things. But mm -hmm. I would just encourage them to keep exploring things because they'll probably find something that really clicks with them and um, helps them move through whatever it is that they're working on at that moment. That is so beautiful. Well, I can see just from your description that, that the growth that you've made and the strides you've made, and my hat's off to you because you. I know the journey. And one of the things, the biggest message here for anybody that's going to hear this video and read this book, and there are many that have read the first book, is that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. and that we are sisters uniting to spread the message that we can heal, we can thrive. And you're a beautiful, beautiful example of somebody that has chosen to, to do what it takes. And we can't say that it's easy. That road's not easy. No, no. I kind of decided that, you know, I, I, you know, I used to think I could just change or erase that part of my life or just move past it. But when I realized that that was not going to happen, that wasn't, what happens in healing, I realize that, you know, the best thing that I can do is try and offer support and help uh, practitioners and clinicians and other people understand what the journey is like from a client's perspective mm -hmm. and somebody who's gone through this. So I hope by, by doing this video and contributing to this book that, you know, somebody will feel supported and, and understood. That's so beautiful. I applaud you very much. I don't know that any of us living on the face of this earth today gets out without getting some kind of damage, <laughs> right. you know, but when it comes to this kind of abuse and the, and abuse is abuse, no matter what kind of abuse it is, there's no comparing, there's no mine's worse, yours worse, there's none of that. But the fact is, is that we do have stuff that, that has come our way and it's what we're doing about it to make ourselves to help ourselves to heal and to be well because we are meant to thrive we are yeah thank you so much for taking the time for this interview and and really giving of your heart to share a very very valuable message you've done a wonderful job on it thank you